Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. I say glory to Jesus. Those that are excited to be in the house this morning, say amen. amen. Let me hear your strong amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Glory. You're welcome into the house of the Lord, Pastor Takunda. Good to see you. Good to have you in the house. Praise God. And to my own mother, I love you, Mama. You are the best mother in the world. Praise God. And you're welcome. Praise God. Amen. Because of our time, I'm just going to introduce this topic. And then we can always build up on it because we must have communion today. Praise the Lord. The topic that I'm starting on is called Breaking the Demonic Siege. Breaking the Demonic Siege. Praise God. Huh? I'm known for breaking things. <laughs> breaking the invisible barriers, breaking the Uncle Laban effect. <laughs> we, <laughs> we are always breaking things. So, <laughs> breaking the demonic siege. You look at the person next to you and say, breaking the demonic siege. Those who like acronyms is BTDS. <laughs> BTDS. Praise God. Well, last week we started touching on some things which, uh, by the way, were, were inspirational and the Holy Spirit just began to build up on the things that we touched on. Praise God. You know, we said last week as we concluded that we need to accept God's word. And we said your situation can change. Huh? And I declared last week, and I said, I'm God's messenger to deliver back to you what belongs to you. We talked about divine health coming back, prosperity, victory, progress. And we touched on the city of Nain. How many remember the city of Nain? And we say that the city of Nain became a place of celebration. There was transformation from the situation that it was where death was occurring in the city. And when... God was done with what he was doing through the words of Jesus Christ. There was celebration in the city of Nain. Praise God. How many remember the city of Jericho? And we say Jericho means pleasant. Praise the Lord. And when Elisha had dealt with the situation, the Bible tells us that the land was cured and it became fruitful and the waters were healed. You remember that? You remember that? You remember the story of Samaria? What happened in Samaria? Samaria was under a siege of the enemy. Praise God. But when the prophet of God spoke, he said, by this time tomorrow, there is going to be a change. Praise God, somebody. And four lepers that were sitting outside the city, the Bible tells us that they began to challenge the situation. Four lepers challenged the situation, and when they challenged the situation, the enemy fled from the place. And when the enemy fled, there was liberation in the city of Samaria. And I'm saying your story can change too. Praise God. Praise God. I was listening to a testimony, one thing after another, in an accident. This, that, 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 that. The enemy was trying to do something. And at some point, that demonic siege must be broken. And it must end. Praise God. The Bible tells us we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Nothing happens on its own. Look at the person next to you and say, nothing just happens. Praise God. Do you want to tell the person again, nothing just happens? Look at the life of Job. Huh? Job is prosperous. Things are happening. God has blessed him immensely. And one day, Things just start breaking down. Job had no idea what was going on, but because we have read the book of Job, we know that behind the scenes, there was a devil that was doing stuff. Are you still with me, somebody? If you're still with me, say amen. amen. Praise God. Praise God. I'm saying to somebody, your story will change in this season. Because this October, our assignment is one. 
just to break the demonic siege over your life. Praise God. And we will break it for sure. Praise the Lord, somebody. Good. In the Word of God, we see another story. And this is the story of Hezekiah. The story of Hezekiah. The king of Assyria was determined to bring Hezekiah down and the kingdom of, of Judah. He started sending messengers to speak words to the people. Praise God. Words of discouragement. Words of fear. Words of sorrow. Words of confusion. Until the people were totally confused. Because the things that were being said were, were quite rude. Even the servants of Hezekiah say to the people, Why don't you speak in your own language? Because we understand your language. Don't speak in the local language because the people on the wall are hearing it. And they said, they are the ones that must hear it. Are you hearing me, somebody? And so, the enemy continued to do what he was doing. Praise God. Never, 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 never look down upon words. Look at the person next to you and say, never look down upon words. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, when we were growing up, and somebody told you and said, or you will see. You had to go and report back home. <laughs> and tell your mother or your father that that boy there told me that I will see. Praise God. Why? Because words cannot be ignored. You still with me, somebody? I want you to follow me today because this is the foundation we are laying for everything that we're going to do in this month. Praise the Lord. So never look down upon words. Words created the universe. Spoken words created the universe. The Bible tells us the earth was without form and it was void. Then God said, let there be light. So if God spoke and there was light, it means that words on their own carry power. Praise God. And we saw last week that Jesus, when he addressed situations, what did he do? He spoke words of power. When he go to that young man who was dead, coming out of the city of Nain, what did he do? He simply spoke words. He said, young man, arise. Are you still with me, somebody? Are you still with me, somebody? So words are powerful. And words are important. Never, never Ignore words. Praise God. Praise God. Don't be ignorant. Instantly deal with words that are spoken. Don't be ignorant. Deal with words there and there. Look at the person next to you and say, deal with them. There and there. Don't be ignorant. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us death and life are where? They are in the power of the tongue. Praise God. And he says, they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. When he says death and life is in the power of the tongue, I want you to understand that that scripture is not just referring to your tongue. It's also referring to the tongue of your loved ones. And it's also referring to the tongue of your enemies. Praise God. The Bible does not say death and life is in the power of your tongue. It says it's in the power of the tongue. Praise God. Praise God. Which means you cannot allow anybody to pronounce things over your life. You still with me? You still with me? Praise God. Words are important. Words travel in the realm of the spirit. Words create foundations. Words build buildings. Words create things. Praise God. Praise God. So, when the enemy goes to his altar, what does he do? He is not dancing in front of the altar. He is speaking words. Praise God. What did the prophets of Baal do when they built their altar? What were they doing? The Bible tells us they were chanting the whole day. What were they chanting? Words. Because they understand that words have power. 
Praise God. Praise God. Which is used with? You here? You still here? They use what? With. For them to bewitch you, they must use a channel of with. Praise the Lord. Are you still here? Amen. If you're still here, say amen. amen. Praise God. So words are important. And they must be taken care of at that particular level. Praise God. Eventually, in the story of Ezekiel, a letter is sent to him. And this letter, not by coincidence, contained what? Words. Praise God. It contained words. Now the words were written and recorded. They were no longer just words spoken. Now they are recorded. They are now written down. Praise God. So all words are important, whether spoken or written. Are you hearing me, somebody? It's even worse when it's written because it's now for posterity. It's going to go on and on and on. So today we're saying every letter that is written against you is going to meet with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right, I don't know if you're hearing me today. Do we now record it? Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 19. Verse number 14. If you're there, say amen. If you're there, say amen. He says there, and Hezekiah received the letter of the messengers. And he read it. And Hezekiah, when he read this letter, the Bible says, he went up into the house of the Lord. And spread it before the Lord. And Ezekiah prayed before the Lord. And said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord. Now, 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 now. I love this man, Ezekiah. He has a problem. But when he goes up to God to pray, he does not get there and say, God, I have a problem. I like the other testimony. Are you hearing me, somebody? He didn't go to God to say, God, I have a problem. He say to the problem, problem, I have a God. <laughs> huh? So, Hezekiah goes to God. And look at the content of his prayer. Somebody must be rebuked right now. Because you can already see why your prayers were not being answered. Praise God. He goes and he begins to talk to God. I love this. He says, O Lord of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubims, thou art a God, even thou alone. Of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. And then he says, Lord, bow down your ear and hear. O Lord, open thy eyes and see. And hear the words of Sennacherib, which he hath sent to reproach the living God. So he's simply saying, God, now see what has come here. Praise God. There are lessons here that we can pick up, that we can glean from the behavior of Ezekiel. He went up, number one, he went up into the house of the Lord to break a demonic siege. Where do you go? You go to the house of the Lord. Are you still with me, somebody? I am asking you right now to break a demonic siege. Where do you go? Do you go to your friends and start saying, my friends, you know, I really have a situation. Things are really bad. I, I, I wish you could help me, my friends. Listen, you're wasting time. Praise God. Hezekiah goes up to the house of the Lord. You need to go up to the house of the Lord. Some of you were complaining too much. 
writing everybody WhatsApps and saying, hey, I have a problem here. You are wasting precious time to break a demonic siege. Number one, go up to the house of the Lord. Number two, what does he do? He spread the letter before the Lord. I remember hearing a message in the 90s, and the man kept saying, God can read letter. He was a Nigerian. I will never forget that message. He was saying, God can read letter. God can read letter. God can read letter. Look at the person next to you and say, God can read letter. Tell them again, God can read letter. Now, nah, you are not hearing me. Shake the person next to you and say, hey, God can read letter. It doesn't matter what language it's written in. God can read letter. If you forget everything else that I say today, just go home remembering that God can read letter. It doesn't matter what letter the enemy has sent you. It might be a letter from the doctor. It might be a letter from the employer firing you. It might be a letter of regret for a job that you were applying for. It might be a letter saying you have failed. I am saying to you today, God can read letter. Ah, Iwe. I love a God who is educated. A God who can read. Huh? He's not like unto the damp idols. That cannot do anything. That cannot read anything. Our God can read letter. He knows what's going on. Praise God. So Hezekiah does not bother to read the letter to God. He spread it on the altar. And he said to God, open your ears and hear. <laughs> open your eyes and see what these guys are saying. And he says, this is a reproach to you, not to me. Because I have a God. And he began to say that in the letter they are saying that all the other gods of the nations that we have defeated. And he says, Lord, it is true. But those things were not gods at all. You are God of the heavens and the earth. You rule and you reign. Are you hearing me, somebody? We have a God, people. Our God is attentive. Our God is at work. Our God is ready to rescue us when we must be rescued. Are you hearing me, somebody? There is no devil that can win against you. So you spread the letter before the Lord. Number three, he prayed before the Lord. I say, don't waste time talking to everybody. Pray. Go to the house of the Lord. Look at 2 Kings chapter 19. Praise God. Before we go there, how you pray matters. Huh? How you pray matters. Look at the person next to you and say, how you pray matters. Huh? When you look even at the Lord's prayer, when the disciples went to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray. Huh? What did Jesus say? He said to them, this way you must pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He says, begin with praising God. Huh? When you miss that, you are missing it. You don't go to God and the moment you kneel down, oh my God. Where are you, my God? Uh-uh. Begin by give him praise. Worship him. Give him honor. Give him thanks. And when you do that, you can then begin to present what you need to present. Praise God. Are you hearing me, somebody? Are you hearing me, somebody? Are you hearing me, somebody? Now I'm putting my legal experience into this. The prayer that you make, must be like a legal thing that you are doing. Praise God. It's a legal transaction. You don't just get into court and just say, this one is guilty, he is guilty. He is guilty, he is guilty. You'll be kicked out of court. Whether you're a lawyer, whether you're an advocate, whether you have training in what you're doing, you'll be kicked out. There are procedures that must be followed. And Jesus showed us the pattern 
when you say it this way, you must pray. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So you begin to praise God. Whether you are bruised and beaten, whether you are feeling sad and low, the starting point is praise. Give him praise. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Praise the Lord. 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 20. You still with me? Are you still here? Then Isaiah, look at the person next to you and say, then Isaiah. Say it again, then Isaiah. Say it again, then the man of God. Say it again, then Isaiah. The son of Amos, send to Hezekiah. Say it. So, Isaiah is not in the prayer room. He's not in the place where Hezekiah is praying. But because our God hears and our God sees, what does he do? He sends a message to Isaiah where he was. And the message was, my servant Hezekiah has just prayed a prayer. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So God does not answer him with a loud voice as he is in the house of the Lord. God does not say, Hello, Hezekiah. Hezekiah. Uh-uh. <laughs> Praise God. I wish I could say it in Yoruba today. Huh? Praise God. He does not use a deep voice to say, Hezekiah, Hezekiah, my son. Nyakuzwa <laughs> Hezekiah. Uh-uh. God sends a word to his servant. And the servant of the Lord hears the word. Are you hearing me, somebody? In the equation for breaking the demonic seed, you need a man of God. You need a man of God. There are some things that must be escalated. Are you hearing me, somebody? I know you pray powerful prayers in your house, but you still need God's servant to then handle the matter. Because Isaiah then sends a message. And listen to what he says. That says, the Lord God of Israel, that which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. Huh? He says, I have heard it. Praise God. That which you have prayed, I have heard. So God does not come to Hezekiah as he is kneeling there and say, Hezekiah, I have heard you. No, he sends a message to Isaiah where he was. And he says, tell Hezekiah that I have had what he is praying. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. There are prayers that God hears. And unfortunately, there are some prayers that he does not hear. You hearing me, somebody? There are some prayers that God hears. And there are some prayers that God does not hear, unfortunately. Praise God. Praise God. Some of you can now discern why you kept praying over the past 10 years, over the past 20 years, and it seems God never heard. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're still here? I declare your prayers are coming to God's attention today. Let's go to 2 Kings 19, verse 29, quickly. Because of our time, I must conclude quickly. And this shall be a sign unto thee. Now God begins to speak. I love the words of God. They are sweet words. He said, this shall be a sign unto you. You shall eat this year. Look at the person next to you and say, I shall eat. I say it again, I shall eat. Say it again, I shall eat. Uh, say it the loudest, I shall eat. I shall eat. Say it again, I, I shall, shall eat. eat. Just help your friend point at them and say, you, you shall, shall eat, eat 
this year. Huh? Huh? God, are you being honest? I'm under a siege here. Huh? I don't even have taxi money. I don't have anything. God is saying, you shall eat this year. Are you hearing me, somebody? That siege will be broken this year. See, my enemies are surrounding me right now. There seem to be no way out. And God says, you shall eat this year. But I got fired. Yes, you shall eat this year. But they kicked me out. Yes, you shall eat this year. But they changed the goalpost. Yes, you shall eat this year. Whether the goalposts are changed or not. Whether they kicked you out or not. Whether they have beaten you or not. You shall eat this year. Look at the person next to you again and say, I, I shall eat this year. Shout your name right now. I say shout your name. Shout your name. And the words of the Lord today is that you, that name that you have shouted, shall eat this year. I said you shall eat. Uyasha. This year. Praise God. Praise God. Look at the person next to you and say, I will eat. Say it again, I will eat. Say it again, I will eat. So how does it happen? How does the equation change? Huh? This guy is shouting, he's speaking words of abuse. He's speaking all sorts of words. And yet God says, I have heard your prayer. And because I have heard your prayer, this is going to be the sign. I see somebody's refrigerator prophetically right now. Huh? Before you could not afford a loaf of bread. I see you now having many loaves of bread in your fridge. I don't know if you're hearing me today. Why? Because you shall eat this year. He says, you shall eat this year. Such things as grow of themselves. I want you to understand the analysis of that scripture. Such things as grow of themselves. That simply means that you are going to eat this year without working. Somebody is saying, can that really happen? Yes. 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 It can happen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Look at the person next to you and say, this year, without work, things that grow of themselves, Praise God. So it doesn't matter how many cattle you have used this year. It doesn't matter how many fields you have plowed this year. God is saying, whatever you have done this year as a sign, you shall eat that which grows of itself. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And he says, in the second year, that which springeth of the same. So something has grown of itself in the first year. And in the second year, so you eat from it, you glean from it. And in the second year, you go back there and you still have a something. Enough to eat for a whole year. Praise God. I don't know if you're hearing me today. You shall eat that which grows of itself. Praise God. And he says, And in the third year, sow ye and reap and plant vineyards and eat the fruits thereof. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward and be a fruit upward. I love that. I love that. It means your foundations 
are becoming solid, huh? you are taking root downward, which means nothing will move you. And as you are taking root downward, he says you shall be a fruit upward, which means you are enjoying life. You are enjoying life. Praise God. Let me be Joyce Meyer in your life today and say enjoy everyday life. Praise God. Hallelujah. You shall be a fruit upward and grow roots downward. You shall not be moved. No enemy will move you anymore. You are resolute. You are fame. You are put in there. No demon of hell, no manipulation of the devil can move you anymore. Are you hearing me, somebody? Are you hearing me, somebody? So you shall eat this year such things as grow of themselves, and in the second year that which springs from the same, and in the third year sow and reap. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And he says in 2 Kings chapter 19, 32 to 34, Therefore thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, ye shall not come into this city. You hear me, somebody? He says, ye shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same ye shall return. That demon <laughs> that was threatening you, the Lord is saying today, he shall not come in this city called you. It will not cast a bank. It will not shoot an arrow. It will not do anything against your life. He's saying the same way that it came, the same way it's going back. Listen to me. There is return to sender this Sunday. Whoever was sending stuff to you, to your life, There is a return to sender today. I don't care where they were casting the arrows from. It might be from KZN or from MP or from EC or from EW, whatever. Wherever they are doing it from, the same way it came, the same way it's going back. Are you hearing me, somebody? Whoever was manipulating your progress at work, the same way it came, the same way it's going back. It's going back. Shout back to sender. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. By the way that he came, by the same way he shall return. The same way he came, the same way he shall return. We are sending Ebola back where it belongs. We are sending that HIV back where it belongs. We are sending that blood pressure back where it belongs. We are sending back that diabetes. We are sending it all back. The same way it came is the same way it returns. It will not cast an arrow in your life. Are you hearing me, somebody? He says, and shall not come into this city saith the Lord, for I will defend this city. I love that. The battle is now escalated. God says, I will defend this city. God is saying today, you will defend this city called you. You will defend this city called you. You will defend this city called you. I am prophesying right now. You will defend this city called you. It doesn't matter what the enemy was trying to do. God will defend, he will defend this city called you. I don't care what manipulation the enemy was doing in this season. God is saying he will defend this city that is called you. You are heavenly defended. You are heavenly watched. Your season to go forward has come. Are you hearing me, somebody? He says I will defend this city. And the reason he says, for my own sake, he says, and for my servant David's sake, he says, I will defend the city. For his own sake, he will defend you. You will make sure you progress. You will make sure you make it. 
you will make sure that that demonic manipulation is broken for his own sake. Huh? God joined the battle himself. Listen to this. Verse 35. It says, And it came to pass that night. That night. It came to pass. Look at the person next to you and say, It came to pass. Tell them again, It came to pass. Tell them, It shall come to pass. Say it again, It shall come to pass. Whatever you were facing, It shall come to pass. It says here, It came to pass. That night. In that night season. In that darkness. It came to pass. 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 But the angel of the Lord went up. One angel went up. One angel was deployed. The angel of the Lord went up. And when the angel of the Lord went out, he says, He smote in the camp of, a, of the Assyrians and a hundred fosco and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. <laughs> Just for you who do not understand King James' language, the equation here is one angel to 185,000 soldiers. <laughs> when angel goes out, and when that angel goes out, when they wake up in the morning, they didn't know what hit them. 185,000 of them were dead. They were corpses. Their spirits and souls were gone. Are you hearing me, somebody? God is well equipped to deal with your situation. Are you hearing me, somebody? Just one angel is enough. You can deploy only one angel to break that siege over your life. Are you hearing me, somebody? Are you hearing me, somebody? Are you hearing me, somebody? Look at the person next to you and say, the siege is broken over my life. Say it again, the siege is broken. Over my life. I want you to stand in the presence of the Lord right now. Lift those hands towards heaven. Begin to thank God right now. Begin to talk to God. 